זאת אשמתך. Shalom and welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss, and we welcome you to our program today. Right. We're so excited to continue our series on Abraham, the father of faith, mm -hmm. and not only a father of faith, but a man of altars. Right. And we learn from him. Mm -hmm. Whenever we make mistakes, we can correct ourselves, come back to the place where God spoke to us, mm -hmm. and re-erect the altar. And that's what he does. He does. And actually, we're going to be speaking to you from Bethel, the actual place where Abram erected this altar. He's come out of Egypt with Sarai with great substance, which is a foreshadowing of some 400 years later when Moses and the children of Israel will also come out of Egypt with great substance. So God gives us a picture of what's in store for the children of Abraham through the life of Abraham. So let's join them in our drama right now. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that they had for they were now very rich with silver and gold. They came again unto Bethel, the place where Abram had previously built an altar. And Abram and his nephew Lot pitched their tents in Bethel. Elohim b'rech otanu b'shef aram. Tada l'el. Hadek. Hadek yoter. Od. Hine tov. כמה טוב לחזור הביתה. במצרים היה טוב לזמן מה, אבל המקום הזה, המקום הזה מיוחד. אתה יכול לראות את זה. רואים את זה במזבח. לא יודע לאן המסע הזה ייקח אותנו, אבל אנחנו זקוקים לעזרתו. Abram was on a long journey, meeting with God, losing his way with God, and then finding his way back to God. And here we are at Bethel, place where he pitched his tent earlier. It even says in Genesis 13, 3, Bayelech Masa'av Minegev Ve'ad Beit El. He came up from the Negev, from the desert, and came to this place, to Bethel, the house of God. You know, it's like that for us, isn't it? Our walk is such a, a meandering sometimes where we lose our way and then we find our way back to God. Remember, Abraham was a man of altars. He would build an altar, meet with the Lord, maybe drift a little bit or wander a little bit, but because of his faith, he would come back and build an altar and be with God. It's not unlike Yeshua himself leaving his place to come to be with us. Philippians 2 tells us that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, and yet he made himself of no reputation and came to be with us, to take our place. The New Testament application, Rabbi Shaul, the Apostle Paul, he tells us to present our bodies. He begs us, I beg you, brethren, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And that's how it is. We're to bring ourselves to an altar, present ourselves to the Lord, let Him change us, change our mind, transform us so that we walk with Him in a deeper way. And that's what this place represents, Bethel, the house of God, where we meet with Him. Abram never built buildings. He pitched tents. He was looking for something beyond the land. The land is important. The land was given. It's a promise. But he also was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. According to Hebrews chapter 11, Abram was living in this world and also looking into Olam Haba, the world to come. He was a man of faith. He was the father of our faith. We are grafted in. If you're not Jewish, you're grafted in to the commonwealth of Israel. According to Ephesians chapter 2, you're grafted into the commonwealth of Israel by faith 
in the God of Abram. And that's what we see being played out here, worked out here. Abram is building altars. He's meeting with the Lord. He's got perspective both on the land, as incredible as it is that the promise of this land was given to him and his seed. It was also, he was also looking for a, a city beyond. He was looking for a place in the heavenlies. And we see both existing at the same time. It reminds me of Yerushalayim being a plural word. Jerusalem above, Jerusalem below. Uh, an earthly Jerusalem, a heavenly Jerusalem. A dual word, a plural word, because there is the goodness of God in His creation and God above His creation. And Abram was beginning to understand that. He was pitching his tent, building his altars, and walking with the God who called him by name. For insightful perspectives of Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levant Letter. When you call, be sure to ask for our free catalog with the latest videos, books, and music. Our correspondence course, the Institute of Jewish Christian Studies includes reading packets, teaching CDs, and mail-in tests. You may want to join us on an upcoming tour of Israel or Petra, or cruise the Mediterranean visiting Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. And Abram had flocks and herds and tents, as did his nephew Lot. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram and the herdsmen of Lot. המריבה הזאת נמשכת יותר מדי. אין צורך שזה ימשיך. תסתכלו. תסתכלו על הארץ. קחו מה שאתם רוצים, אתה והרועה שלך. אם אתה תלך לשם שמאלה, אני אלך לשם ימינה. הבחירה בידך. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. that was well watered everywhere. And Lot journeyed east and dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. The herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abram got into striving with each other about the land. And Abram, in a very spiritual way, said to Lot, I'll tell you what, we should not have strife between us. We're of the same family. Why don't you choose whichever land you want and I'll take the other. In fact, he says in chapter 13, in verse 10, Lot looked up and saw the whole plain of the Yardin was well watered everywhere before Adonai destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of Adonai, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Soar. So Lot chose all the plain of the Yardin for himself. He looked east and chose the Yardin, chose the Jordan Valley. You know, it's interesting that he looked east and chose that land because when we see separation coming and we see Abram giving Lot the choice, what does Lot do? He chooses by looking, by his sight. And we know that this is developing as a walk of faith, not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, we're told in Scripture. And Abram was willing to allow Lot to choose whatever he saw and Abram would take the lower path and choose whatever Lot did not take. Lot looks east, he takes the eastern section. You know, when Adam and Eve were sent out of the Garden of Eden, they were sent out to the east. And often in scripture, that which is going away from God is pictured as being east. It's not a hard and fast rule, but often you'll see that metaphor in the scriptures. And that's what happened here. Lot chose that which was towards Sodom and he pitched his tent that way and we're going to see later on how that has very serious repercussions for Lot and his family. Abram yields, he bows, he allows Lot to choose because he does not want there to be strife. 
and even Lot's name means veil. He wasn't seeing spiritually. He wasn't discerning the land and it would get him into trouble. Abram, on the other hand, was discerning not only the land, but willing to let go and willing to let Lot choose because he was taking the more spiritual part. Isn't it like that for us in our spiritual walk with the Lord? Sometimes we just have to yield and let others have their way and let God decide. Let God discern. Let God divide. Let God separate. And this is really a time of separation. Just as Abram had to be separated from his father to come into this new land, so now he needs to be separated from Lot. He needs to be able to move on into that which God is calling him to. And Lot is choosing to camp, you might say, or stay where he's choosing, which is not the same as what Abram is choosing. And so we see that separation. Sometimes in our walk with God, that happens. I know for me, when I became a believer, it was a very shocking experience to those around me. Some of my friends thought I had gone crazy because I suddenly, seemingly, had this incredible revolutionary view of Scripture and of who Jesus is, who Yeshua is. And my friends thought that I had lost it because it was such a radical change. And I had to separate. I did it in love. I did it with their best in mind and heart. But I had to go on. I had to study the Word, go to Bible college, go to graduate school, do the things that I was called to do. And in that way, I was separated from them. It was a heart, heart difficult thing. It was a difficult thing to do because I didn't want to. I loved them. But in order to follow the Lord, sometimes there is a separation that occurs. And that's what we see here. Avram and Lot are separating with a good motive to stop the strife between the herdsmen. And Avram is going to take that which Lot does not take. So as we go into this story, we're beginning to see, and the scripture tells us that he pitched his tent towards Sodom and that they were evil, and the men of Sodom were evil. It says that in the Word. And in a little while, we're going to find out how evil they were and what God was going to do in terms of relating to the judgment that was necessary for the men of Sodom. Israel, it's a delight. It's an apple of God's eye. It's the desire of all nations, Scripture mm -hmm. says. And it's a wonderful place to come tour and to come visit and to come learn. The Scripture is going to come alive. We want you to join Miles and me on a tour. So go to 1-800-WONDERS and speak to Tracy, our tour manager, and she will be able to sign you up, and we would love to host you. It never gets old. Never. There's always great revelation in the Word, and there's just a life-changing experience being in Israel, always. You know, a way to know what's going on here at the ministry is to receive our free newsletter, the Levitt Letter. It's full of news from the Middle East, things you won't hear in the mainstream media or read in your newspapers. There's a Hebrew lesson. There's uh, advice about economics. It's just a great magazine. It's more than a newsletter. It's really a full magazine. And our offer this week is... Israel's Right to the Land, written by David Hawking. The introduction is by Zola Levitt. And we really need to know what we are speaking of when we speak about Israel's right mm -hmm. to be there because there's so much conflict around this. This little booklet will help you to understand scripturally, historically, archaeologically, and by means of conquest why Israel has the right to be in the land. So it's a great booklet. Our announcer later in the program will tell you how to get a hold of that. Now, let's go back to our drama as Abram and Sarai continue their great journey. And the Lord said unto Abram, Lift up thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever.
אדוני אמר, זרעי יהיה כעפר הארץ. חצה את הארץ, הוא אמר, והיא שלך. כולה. Right here at Bethel is where God speaks to Avram and says, All the land you see I will give to you and your descendants forever. In Hebrew, Ki et kol ha'aretz asher ata roe lecha et nena. In other words, I'm giving this to you and your descendants. This is a promise and a command. And when did it happen? After the separation from Lot. Yeah, after there's a separation, sometimes there can be something very special that God can do. He separates, but then he provides a provision in the mm -hmm. separation. Yes. He said to Lot now, after Lot had left, he said to Abraham, now look up, mm -hmm. look to the north, south, east, and west, yes. to all the land, and I will give it to you and your descendants. If you could number the sand or if you could number the dust, so shall your descendants be. It transcends human imagination. It does, human comprehension, yeah. because there was no sun yet. There was no... There was just a promise to Abram. Right. He had to walk in a kind of faith that was beyond human comprehension. In fact, the very word that God uses in Scripture, mm -hmm. this word na, is an ancient Hebrew word for now. And the way it's used 60 times in the Old Testament, but only four times in relation to a human, because it is beyond human comprehension. How can we ever really get our head around this, that Avram was about to be promised something and told, commanded, to walk the land and to know that God was giving this to him and his descendants. Yeah, he said, look up now. Yes. There's something that God's asking each of us mm. to do in this now season that yes. he's had us to do. And one of it we know personally is to stand with the Jewish people yes. in this time of, of yes. hard times for them. Absolutely, because the, the land, this, this central part of the country here, the so-called West Bank, is actually the heartland of Israel. This is Judea and Samaria. It's the way of the patriarchs. It's the place that Abram made his altars. It's the place that Abram walked, that he was commanded to walk and to take ownership of. And it was promised from generation to generation. I remember when we brought our children here, mm -hmm. how uh, it felt like such a fulfillment of this scripture. Because here they were, Jewish kids coming generations later, centuries later, millennia later, after Abram was promised this, and yet the promise is still being fulfilled. And now we need to stand with the Jewish people because the neighborhood is upset and the world court is upset with them, United Nations, etc. Miles, when I first landed in Jerusalem the first time, I remember hearing very clearly in my heart, mm. this is my land, and I chose the Jewish people to give this land to. Mm -hmm. And I felt a deep call inside of me to stand with his promises for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that his descendants would be able to remain in the promised land, and that the heartland would remain his land. Yes, and it's really being fulfilled in our day. Amos 9.15 speaks about the being planted in this land, in these heartland areas the mountains of Israel never to be plucked up again mm -hmm. to build vineyards to grow things to to have these so-called settlements well these are not settlements these are incredible communities of people that are reading the Bible believing the Bible and living according to what the Bible says they are they've landed in Israel they're staying here and they will continue to be here until God says something else and he's not taking this covenant he back. said he'll never pluck them out of this land exactly. again exactly so it's very important that we stay with God's plan yes. and, and his land. Yes. And so we want to continue to follow the way of Abraham, including becoming people of faith that walk by faith and that respond to God's commandments and promises with faith. So stay with us as we walk this land, stay with the Jewish people, support Israel, and we, together we'll see the destiny, the shared destiny of Jews and Christians come to pass as we look to the coming of Messiah. Wonderful place in Israel that we got to go to, mm -hmm. Bethel, the house of God, yes. right? At the altar that Abraham went back to after mm -hmm. leaving Egypt. Mm -hmm. And after God further brought separation between him and Lot, right. you know, Lot 
chose by what looked good. Exactly. And Abraham, again, we see the character in Abraham that he did not want to have strife between mm -hmm. him and his herdsmen. So he said, Lot, you choose. That's right. And I know whatever you choose, God's going to still bless me. And it was right after that separation that God begins to further bless Abraham and further develop the covenant promises to him and his his offspring. It's really a picture of faith and obedience right. working together. Right. And separation. Exactly. You know, he's called out of Ur, called out of your family, mm -hmm. and now and now a further separation of choosing God's choice and not and not even the world. Right. You know, we were able to meet with David Haivri. He is a resident of Samaria. These very areas that are contested and that are being uh, spoken about in your media all the time. He is the spokesman for Samaria. He's the liaison with the world at large for the Jewish community living up in the mountains of Israel, the heartland of Israel. So let's go to my interview with David Haivri. David, we're standing here where thousands of years of history have taken place for the Jewish people. What does it mean for us to be here right on the way of the patriarchs? Miles, this is a very inspirational. I don't know if there's anything, any place in the world that's more inspirational than the place that we're standing right now. Here with the Temple Mount behind us, the city of David just below us. This is the center, the center of Israel, and it's the center of the world. According to our belief, Jerusalem is the center of the world the capital of Israel, the capital of the Jewish people. And it doesn't stop here. We, we keep going from this area. We, we come to your home, don't we? The uh, road of the, our fathers, road number 60, mm -hmm. which takes us from Shechem in the north, all the way down to Beersheba in the south, passing by all of the locations that are mentioned in the Bible. All of the stories of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. all occurred along this road. Joseph the son of, of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob sends Joseph out to seek out his brothers mm -hmm. who are minding the flocks. And he goes to the valley of Dotan. That's where he was abducted by his brothers. Yes. And there are so many stories in the Bible that we read about, about our fathers revolving around these areas. And it is a great, a great inspiration living here, living on these mountains, on the mountains of Israel. I noticed the, the prophet said that, that we would be planted back here never to be uprooted again, and yet there are many threats against you living in the community that you're in right now. That, that is the truth. I represent the Shamron Liazan office, the Jewish communities of the Samaria, and it's, it is ironic that all of the arrows faced against Israel in the world, all of the propaganda, all of the hate focused on Israel in university campuses, mm all talk about Israel's control of this area, mm -hmm. the area that they call the West Bank. Yes. Is Judea and Samaria, is the heartland of Israel, yes. is the core. This area, it's so ironic that this area that's the main claim of the Jewish people to the land of Israel, is, that is the same place that the nations of the world are trying to pressure Israel to remove Jewish people from and to give over to another people. You know, it was a sovereign meeting uh, learning about David Haivri. We were on our way into a meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu mm -hmm. where he came to thank American believers for standing with Israel. That was a special time, a it night was. with him and how he shared his heart and yes. how he, he didn't think that he was uh, without uh, frailty. He yes. even used the same illustration of David, yep. you know, and uh, as a leader in yep. the land that he, did. he knew that he needed accountability. He did. He drew a great biblical parallel for any leader having a authority over him, God's mm -hmm. authority. Right. And at that meeting, we met David Haivri, who happens to be the liaison for Shomron, for Samaria. And so it was a really uh, God incident where we met this man who you can hear is very an articulate spokesman for the mountains of Israel, for the I, heartland of I Israel. I love how he talks about Highway 60, yes. that it is the road of the patriarchs. Yep. And they are restoring that road back right. to the Lord right. and restoring his altars. Right. The yeah. Jews that are moving back to the land, right. into the heartland, into Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, mm -hmm. are living on the road of the patriarchs. And it's not just a geographical lineage, but there's a historical lineage. Well, God said he'd promised the land to... Abraham yes. and Isaac yes. and Jacob. Yes. And it talks about their lineage. Complete. Yes. Go ahead, Miles. Well, what are you Jacob's say? name is Israel. Right. And, and 
Abraham is a, is a descendant of Eber. Eber means Hebrew. It's where we get the word Hebrew from, mm -hmm. and it means one who crosses over. That whole line comes from the line of Shem, one of Noah's three sons. Shem means name. Even today, Jewish people, when speaking of God, because His name is holy, they will say, Hashem, the name. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the name, we see Eber, one who crosses over, the Hebrews, and then the lineage of Abraham unfolding, coming through Jacob, who is Israel. I, I just am amazed when people say Israel has no right to be in Israel. Well, it was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Israel, Jacob, had 12 sons, one of whom was Judah. And it's Judah that gives us the tribe of Judah from which David comes and from which the Messiah himself comes. He is David's greater son. Mm -hmm. It's where we get the term Jews from Judahites. And David's greater son, Yeshua, is the Mashiach, the Messiah, who's coming back for you if you'll call upon him. Well, uh, it gets we, better and better. It, does, it gets better <laughs> and better. And it's an amazing long lineage of history. We're just so grateful that you're able to see this series. Stay with us next week as we continue our program on Abraham. And for now, remember, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our Bible teaching resource this week, Israel's Right to the Land. You may wonder why is this tiny tract of land given to Abraham nearly 4,000 years ago so important? What right does Israel have to the Holy Land today? This concise booklet pulls abundant evidence from the scriptures and directly addresses 12 key issues that resolve these questions once and for all. In appreciation of your gift of $10 or more, we'll send you Israel's Right to the Land or three booklets for a gift of $20 or more. Please call 1-800-WONDERS or write to our P.O. Box and ask for Israel's Right to the Land. Also, please call toll-free or write to receive our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. It's absolutely free and contains insightful article and news commentary with a refreshing perspective you won't get from the mainstream media. The Levitt Letter is also available at levitt.com along with current and archive TV programs, our national airing schedule, and much more. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.